Okay, so this is the final preview of Dragon's Dogma. What day does it come out? It's like March 21st or something like that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Usually my excitement for a game goes down whenever I hear more about it, but I feel like for this game, it's actually gone up. They played for 10 hours. I thought it would be a simple side quest. The owner of an apothecary enlisted my help to find his lost grandson mm -hmm. who had been taken by wolves. As I followed the trail, I heard a screeching noise from up above. Okay. Oh, bro, he's got a great sword. Thank fucking God. All of a sudden, I'm he cut his tail off. My life against a griffin. It's a monster that's far too strong for my party to handle. Just hit him. But we fight and claw and hold our ground until finally we get it to retreat. Oh, that's cool. I, I like that. Leaf, then set up at the nearby camp and sleep till nightfall. That sleep is then interrupted by the same griffin back for revenge. Oh, fuck. Well, just go that kill him. That somehow boils over into another battle with a white who proceeds to beat me within an inch of my life before I finally take him out. Just okay. as the sun rises after an epic 20-minute battle. Jesus. I don't know how Capcom manages to make a boss fight 20 minutes long and it's fun. Because I feel like I'll be in an MMO and like a boss fight will be like 10 seconds and it's like, ah, uh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Uh, can we wrap this up? Come on. Ooh. None of this was part of the actual quest involving saving the boy. It was just a series of events that... By the way, uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this, if I'm going to play this game, uh, play Dragon's Dogma 1, whenever it's going to happen. So, as I said, like, this weekend, it might not be till, like, Monday or Tuesday, uh, but I will get around to it, like, very, very soon. I'll be going back to Monster Hunter World and finishing the rest of the content there. Then, after I do that, I want to finish the rest of, like, Pow World and Entrouded. And then it's going to be uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma 1. I'm going to play that. I do think that I'll try to play for, like, the memes. I'll try to play the Suicide Squad game, like, for, like, a day or two. But I, I can't imagine that going for more than a day or two. It's one of the most unforgettable encounters Maybe June, then? I've ever had At in the earliest. World action RPG. And it was just one of the incredible encounters I experienced during the 10 hours I spent adventuring through... Dragon's Dogma 2's fantastic open world. Yeah, this is crazy. I wish I could see how big the map is. While I didn't get to start from the very beginning, I did get to begin with the creation... I thought that was a dick. ...of my own pawn. Pawns, for those unfamiliar with the first Dragon's Dogma, are AI-controlled... I did. I'm sorry. Control, ...skills and experience from your game. And then take... I realized it wasn't because it was too small them online there's no way somebody make a furry without a massive dick in, in the game games i'm not going to spend too much time on either pawns or character creation especially because we've already made those videos but what i will say is that pawns are integral to one of my big take damn they've even got fat people in this game ways which is that exploration and discovery in dragon's dogma 2 feels much more natural than ever before it's just like First real foremost, life there are no more quest boards there are maybe no that's what the localization teams are doing like you know the capcom localization team it's not about like adding in like lgbt characters or like you know changing things that could be seen as sexist it's like listen we've got to have this appeal to americans let's add this one in there yeah, uh, like every every other character has to be 380 pounds. Yeah, they're just adding in fat people. There are no markers that appear above people's heads letting you know who's got a quest, and any sort of symbols oh, there's the map. map to let you know of points of interest are kept to a minimum. As oh, such, wow, okay. you only rely on your pawns and NPCs to guide you through Dragon Saga oh, God. World. NPCs will, more often than not, be the ones to approach you with opportunities for side quests, as opposed to it being the other way around. Say, you wouldn't happen to have seen a pretty stone. You there! Did you see an urchin in a cap? Right? Pons will also point out objects of interest. Just yonder looks to be a good spot for harvesting ingredients. Okay. Boulders that can be destroyed to find a path that leads to treasure. That's you cool. Destroyed, I'm your boy. Shall I assist? 
Or Wait, oh, if they I have see. Knowledge of a quest from their owner's game, they will straight up lead you to those quests if you give them the go ahead. All of this leads to a style of exploration and adventuring that feels very organic and appropriately rewarding, very much in the same so way. So it's just like Monster Hunter. You're going around looting bones and picking up beetles. Okay. The Elden Ring and the two yep. most recent Zelda games do. As alluded to in the intro to this preview, you also never really know what to expect once mm -hmm. you set out to pursue a quest lead. Yeah, the I'm very sold. Act yeah. Of exploring beyond the safety of the city's walls is unpredictable, mm -hmm. dangerous, and enticing, which is why it's so exciting. It's kind of interesting. You can't really see the level of these monsters. Over the course of my 10 hours, I got to play with a total of five locations. Okay. Fighter, mage, warrior, That's sorcerer. What, yeah, we're going to play warrior 100%. And trickster, which you can watch a whole other video all about. Unlike the first game, which had you unlocking mm -hmm. advanced vocations simply by leveling up the base ones, the two advanced vocations were actually unlocked via a quest. After visiting the vocation guild, I was given a quest to retrieve a great sword. Acquired an both an arcan staff and a great sword. Oh shit! Staff. And after doing so, I unlocked both the warrior and sorcerer vocations. Bro. Oh fuck. This is going to be so fucking fun, man. I don't know if all of them will be unlocked this way, and I didn't get a chance to unlock any of the hybrid ones, like Mystic Spearhand or Magic Archer, but I definitely like the idea of not having to grind vocations in order to unlock them. I actually kind of like the way the armor in this game is. And I'm sure that probably the end game armor won't probably follow the same archetype, but it's very kind of grounded, but it still has like a sense of style to it. It's like this game hits it in a way that I think like New World, for example, tried to hit the realism, but like kind of missed. Like this is really nice. My it's like Berserk? Of the yeah. I got to try was by far the warrior who maintains the fantasy of being the great Look at this, bro. Like he's actually like every hit staggers them. He's just fucking cleaving. It doesn't even care. Brings giant beasts to their knees Look at this. with just one charge strike, but also Jesus. adds a few more tricks to their repertoire. Holy Director fuck, Hideaki this Itsuno is so good. feedback that the warrior didn't feel like a super viable vocation in the first game, and thus worked hard to give them some new elements to bring out their strengths. For starters, we've jacked up the warrior's offense and destructive power. Smart. To the point where it's unfair. Good. In exchange, its abilities take a little longer to execute. This makes the vocation somewhat difficult to use, but that's where the tackle comes into play. If you're attacked... Use tackle to cause. Oh, you can use the tackle to cause an enemy to be. I wonder where they got this from. Yourself, making it easier to get into the location. Yeah. The tackle he's referring to is a new ability called Barge that allows the warrior to yeah. execute a quick shoulder bash even while they're charging an attack. Which is like I think that is the. That's the way a great sword should play. Like I never liked how, for example, in New World, I felt like the great sword. It was like I was swinging around a pool noodle. Like the great sword fantasy that I liked was the um, the dragon bone crusher from uh, Demon Souls, where it's like you're just flopping this thing around. But holy fuck, if somebody gets hit by this, they're dead. They're fucking dead. Like that's it. Because I feel like great swords sometimes, like, people swing them too fast. Like, it should be really, really slow. I think that if any game that I've ever played, the best great sword fantasy is by far Monster Hunter. It's not even remotely close. To interrupt and potentially stun any enemy that's trying to stuff their attack. The vocation Dark Souls 1 is the, is the next best thing after all is built around being able to charge up massively powerful attacks that deal humongous damage so this small change goes yeah. a long way in making it a little easier yeah cut to get the dick off there off. you go my favorite new addition for the warrior though is a passive skill that allows you to swing regular attacks much more quickly if you're able to precisely time your next button press with when the attack actually lands. Oh, this gives okay. This a nice rhythm to the warrior's combat and allows a skilled player to compensate for the typical weakness of having a very slow attack while still making those very slow and powerful attacks still feel like they have their own place in the warrior's skill set. Also, yeah, I, like I like just being able to charge like a four second attack and then just hit them and chunk their health. And enjoy the feeling of leaping off Can we dismember and though? Your weapon down on a I don't head. think so. This is the vocation for you. 
I mean, there's probably like elements of being able to do it, but I don't know if it's as comprehensive. Deep enough into the sorcerer vocation to see any maybe of the it really is big, crazy spells that they're so beloved for. But what I really enjoyed about the sorcerer was the addition of a unique skill called galvanize. This allows you to why would you play this pussy shit? I have no idea. Dance that recovers your stamina extremely quickly. Which is especially oh, that is useful cool. for the sorcerer due to the fact that their spells take so long to cast. To shorten those spells, you need to use a skill called Quick Spell. I, I know, like, I say that, and then there's going to be, like, day seven of this game, and it's going to be some guy that has, like, you know, he's no life the game, or he's, like, fucking, like, item modded in. Like, you know, his character would be, like, max level with, like, all the best gear. And he'll use, like, some fucking spell. Nobody's, it's, like, Comet Azer or something like that, and just, like, one-shot the last boss allows you to spend stamina yeah. to reduce the spell's cast time. Just like Elden Ring. leads to a careful balance of preparing to cast a powerful spell, uh -huh. using quick spell to shorten its cast time, and then making note of whether you have enough stamina to cast another spell, or whether you have to break away and use Galvanize to get your stamina back up. It's a fun dance that made Sorcerer feel a lot more active than in the past. Is there going to be, like, any online functionality with this besides people being able to use each other's pawns, like, in the first game? Because, like, I think that having yes, no, no, apparently not, I doubt it. Yeah, because I, I don't know, because like Monster Hunter has that, and, and like, I, I really like that. If it doesn't have that, it doesn't have that, right? It's not like, who cares? But, like, yeah, single player again? Okay, that's fine. It is what it is. Isn't it supposed to be a game like that? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't Dragon's know. Dragon's Dogma 2's open world is enormous. I have no idea. Reported to be roughly four times the size of the already huge map mm -hmm. in the first game. And I don't doubt that claim in my experience. Four times the size of the map in the first game. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Out the map and wandering through just a small portion of it. It's big, but it's also Bro, he is fast. exciting encounters both on and off the beaten path that were paced nicely so I wasn't constantly slowed down by back-to-back -back battles. I also I have to also say that, like... ...also never went too long without having something to engage with. But I kind they, of like how a, a lot of games have, like, spells that are so flashy that they cover the whole screen. And I think that you should have a couple of those spells. But, like, for example, in Final Fantasy 16, I felt like too many of the spells were too flashy, and these are much more... I, 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 this is the worst word to use for spells. These are more realistic. You know, they're, they're more realistic. It's like, this is what I would imagine a lightning bolt to be in real life, you know? That was important to eat to know, and the team at Capcom was making yeah. sure that the players really felt the distance that they were Yeah, I, I like this. This looks really, really good. And apparently, yeah, this game isn't going to have fast travel. Listen to this. But I also never went too long without having something to engage with. One thing that was important to Itsuno and the team at Capcom was making sure that the players really felt the distance that they were traveling as they explored. They do? To that well, end, it's like fast not. travel is very limited. Yeah, yeah, it's limited. Yeah. You can only travel Sorry. between discovered port crystals, and every time you do, you must expend a fairy stone, which are highly valuable items that don't come cheap and aren't easily found. Shall we make use of it? Another option you have for getting around is using an ox cart. Which is relatively cheap, but they are limited. One day a game like this will be an MMO. One day. One day it will happen. <laughs> For sure. Any day now. The fact that you can't choose where you travel. The main one that I found only went from the capital city of Vernworth to the checkpoint town, which was far to the west. You also have to consider that ox carts are not a completely safe. I really to... love the style of the game. I I just I I feel like this is so cozy. This is so it, it it's so nice. You know, it's comfy. It it's good. Art style is beautiful. Yeah, it's like what I really like about the art style of this game. And the, yeah, you're right. The color grading in this game is like. This is very appealing to me. It's muted colors. Yeah, I really, really, really like this. Because, like, nowadays, I feel like, especially with Unreal 5, do you guys know what I'm talking about whenever I say games that are made in Unreal have, like, that graininess to them that becomes sameness to them? Yeah. The Unreal vibe. Yeah, yeah. And, like, this doesn't really have that. And I really, really love this.
travel, as they often will be ambushed by all manners of beasts. Of course, you can just hoof it on foot, which is where you'll truly feel the weight of that distance, especially due to the new health restoration mechanic. Can you get a mount in this game? You can't, game, pro right, probably you can't. I probably think I asked this before, because like then you'd have to have everybody have a mount. Yeah, yeah, I guess not. Yeah, because it would, like, it, 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 everybody get on a mount at the same time. Yeah. ...able to heal your entire life bar by using health restorative items and recoverable gray health with spells. In Dragon's Dogma 2, however, every hit diminishes a portion of your max health, and the only ways to restore it are either by finding a campfire to rest at or returning to an inn and resting for the night. Fortunately, if you rest at a campfire, you can also cook some meat and get some much-needed buffs okay. in addition to restoring all of your life. There's a risk involved with resting at a campfire as well. The flames may attract monsters to your campsite, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this preview, you could actually wake up It gives up me a very strong Goblin Slayer vibe. I like that. An angry griffin coming back to finish what it started. What it yeah. all comes down to is this. Virtually every action in Dragon's Dogma 2 has some combination of a cost and a risk tied to it. Fairy stones are risk-free travel, but they come at a very steep price. A thousand dollars. cost, but moderately risky method of travel, and traveling mm -hmm. on foot is free, but extremely risky. Then you must also consider whether it's worth it to is the moonlight on great sword. with low max health, or backtrack to a town to resupply, whether you should avoid fighting the giant tanky ogre, or risk it all on trying to bring it down for both the experience and rare material reward, whether you should keep on the less dangerous beaten path, or take a detour into the unknown. In the 10 hours that I played, these were very compelling decisions to have to make. But the real test will be whether those decisions remain compelling or turn exhausting in hour 20 or 30 when the map has expanded dramatically and you still have quests remaining to complete in a town that you're super far away from. I think that the way that you have to play a game like this is that you have to treat the game like an experience rather than a conveyor belt of content. I think that that's you have to go full immersion and if you don't do that you're not going to have fun playing the game and like whenever i played valheim and like i didn't stream my first playthrough of valheim and i actually think that it was such a great decision for me not to stream the playthrough because there was never like in the mindset of like oh i have to make content out of this or something like that I'm just going to play through the game and enjoy it at my own pace. And I think that really that's what makes games like this. Yeah, not folk fixated on chasing Nux min max digit, you mean? Well, it's it's more than that. It's like just be like just being able to chill out. Like I think that's it. Like just being able to fucking chill out. Like for lack of a better term, for lack of a better word. That's really what I would say. Yeah, it's like you're not chasing a goal in the same way. Hypotheticals aside, though, I love just about every moment that I spent playing Dragon's Dogma 2 during this preview window. It doubles down on everything that I love from the first game, makes some smart improvements to the way quests are handled and how you explore its giant world, and the little taste that I got of the vocations is a tantalizing reminder of why Dragon's Dogma is one of the best in the genre when it comes to delivering on the various power fantasies tied to the classic RPG archetypes. Even after all I played... Yeah, I, I really liked it. I, I, I have to pause. Like, I mean, this is another thing that I really liked about Final Fantasy XVI. Like, this game, like... A lot of the graphics in this game remind me kind of like Final Fantasy 16 in, in a in a weird way. But I think that what makes this what makes me more excited about this is because like in Final Fantasy 16, it was a very linear experience. It was a very uh like kind of directed experience. You're going to do this, you're gonna do that. And this is the story of the game, and you're going to play through the story. And that's not really, like, a bad thing. But at the same time, whenever I played the game, I was always left, left thinking, I wish I could go over this mountain. I wish I could do this or do that. Or, like, there was a little bit more that I could do. And I, it always felt like the game, there wasn't, like, th there wasn't, like, that level of, of immersion. And, uh... I really feel like this game hits 
with like that one thing that I missed out of Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, there was a lack of freedom. There wasn't a yeah, there wasn't adventure. There it is, yeah. Still feel like I just scratched the surface on what Capcom has in store for players when Dragon's Dogma 2 releases on March 22nd. I wonder if they're going to have the same combo that uh that that Monster uh, Monster Hunter does. Because I feel like with the great sword, like the TCS like combo is so it's so cool. It's so fucking badass, man.